Hi, this is Ravi Ozarkar and uh, I'm going to show you really quickly how to generate a, a tabletop structure to do dynamic analysis on it. Okay, tabletop structures are used uh, to support very large compressors and turbines. Okay, so um, when these equipment start operating, uh, there is always a chance of, of a vibration uh, and uh, we need to make sure that these vibrations are uh, within the acceptable limits, okay? So uh, I'm not going to go into the dynamic analysis portions of it. I'm just going to show you how to generate these complex geometries using the strudel interface uh, in this uh, video. So with that being said, I'm going to go in and launch GT Strudel 2018 R1, okay? Now, when I click on it, it asks me what type of model I want to generate. I'm going to use the model wizard to generate my geometry. Then I'm going to use the space frame option. Click on next. Use the unit system of feet and kips. Click on next. Next. I'm going to have one floor. Okay. And then five divisions along the X, five divisions along the Z. Click on next. Each floor is about 30 feet and each bay is about 20 feet by 20 feet. Then click on next. And here I'm just going to say the profile that I want to use is a concrete section. And that section is going to be about 3 feet by 3 feet. Click on OK. And uh, click on OK. Now that section needs to be like we're not going to have any beams in this case. So I'm just going to copy that. But since this wizard is asking me, I'm just going to supply that uh, that same property to my X beams, Z beams and my columns. OK, we'll take a look at how to delete those beams later. Click on next and hit finish. That creates a framework for me to create my tabletop structure. OK, OK, now let's proceed to the graphics. If I go to modeling GP menu, here it'll launch uh, the graphics for Strudel. So this is the Strudel graphics uh, for people who have or who are looking at this graphics for the first time. In the center of your screen is the graphics window. Top left hand side corner, we have the menu, hence the name GT menu here. We have very limited icons, okay, necessary icons. Uh, we have selection options here on the right hand side. This is the data pane, which will change depending on whatever menu item you click. OK, now um, Y axis is the axis of gravity in this case. OK, uh, people who integrate with smart plan 3D CAD work structure uh, may use the Z axis as their axis of gravity. No problem. OK, so now if I Go to help, hotkey help, okay? On the left-hand side, you see there are several hotkeys and one of the, I use these quite a bit, okay? Uh, if I go, just click in my graphics, okay? Left click in my graphics, press the I key, um, it shows me an isometric view. If I press X, Y, it'll show me an X, Y view. Okay, I'm just gonna go to the isometric view. On the right-hand side, you see views. It does the same thing. Okay, so I'm just showing you some shortcuts that you can use once you start getting used to the strudel interface. Okay, now um, first thing that I want to do is create some plates. So if I go to create elements only, I'm just going to create an SPHQ6 plate element. So that's a very standard concrete plate element that people use. Okay, and the thickness of that plate is about 3.5 feet. Now, how do I know my unit system? If I go to unit, active units here, the unit system is feet and kips, right? So no problem. Click on generate elements. I'm just going to create a huge plate element here and decide to subdivide it, okay? There's my plate. It's in preview mode. I can click on store to finalize it. OK, so once that giant plate element has been drawn, I'll mesh it further. OK, so if you go to edit. Refine finite element mesh 
I'm going to go in and divide that mesh into five subdivisions along the X and the Z, X and the Y local. And I'm just going to say, hey, select all plates in the graphics, select everything, refine that mesh. This is a preview mode and I'm going to go and click on store to finalize that, that mesh, okay? Once that's done now, uh, I want to further subdivide it into smaller elements. I can just say select, again, all elements, select finite element analysis mesh, refine mesh, and it subdivides it into smaller pieces. Uh, now, one of the things is like, there's an option to split any framing members. I'm just going to undo it. And I'm just say, going to say, okay, split any framing members. Uh, what it does is it will go in and subdivide the beams also. Although I said I'm not going to use the beams, I'm just going to show you what that feature does, okay? So if I say store, it will go in and now subdivide the beams along the edges into smaller pieces as well. So you have monolithic beam slab action. Okay, so uh, now I'm just going to go in and click on XY view. I'm going to copy this whole slab that I've drawn to the base. Okay, so I'm just going to create a matte slab. I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so if I go to edit copy model, um, here you can just select entities to copy. So let's go in and select fencing option, select members to copy. I'm just going to rubber band that um, portion of the slab. Like in the graphics, uh, I'm just, I don't want to create, select more. So I press I on the keyboard, use this joint option. Okay, I don't want to specify a coordinate to copy. Just going to click on the joint option, generate copy. Bottom left hand side corner, it says, okay, hit the base joint. This is my base joint. This is my delta joint, okay? And if I click on okay, it copies the model for me. This is the preview mode. And if I click on store, boom, it's done, okay? Okay, so one of the good features about uh, GT Strudel is it creates views automatically. So you can go to views and uh, go to more options and I can just say automatic views. Um, and I wanna create views along the Y axis, okay? Tell you why later, okay? So if I click on generate views, I'm gonna accept these views and here, on the right hand side, you see there's a two views created, right? One view for the mat, one view for the slab, okay? Now let's concentrate on the slab. Now, if I click in the graphics, type in XZ, okay? So that shows me the um, XZ view. I can go in and just say redraw solid, okay? So as you can see, we have a lot of beams that we don't need, uh, but the good thing is it helps me out to delete certain elements, okay? Now this slab has openings in it for access to the turbines and the compressors that uh, uh, that we are going to, to uh, do dynamic analysis on, right? So, um, so we wanna remove those, those plate elements. So how do we do that? If you go to edit menu, element data, uh, here you can just say delete elements. Okay, now the hit option is active here. So I'm going to go in and hit certain plate elements. Okay, so I'm just going to delete eight of these plate elements to create an opening, uh, maybe six of them. Okay, now you could have gone in and fenced also. Okay, but that's okay. I'm just going to show you different methods of deleting things. Okay, now here I'm going to use the fencing option for the other. Okay, redraw solid delete elements, okay? So here I'm gonna use just rubber band that area, okay? I'll select all those elements, okay? Wanna delete those elements, fine. Again, go to redraw solid, delete elements, and here, I'm gonna delete these elements, okay? And delete them. Now, you might have noticed that when I delete the elements, it doesn't delete the nodes automatically. Uh, no problem. What we can do is we can go to re uh, check duplicate and floating joints. It'll give you a list of what nodes are floating. We can delete all those node points. 
what we want to do is also delete the beams, right? So let's do that since we are in this view. We're going to go to Edit Menu, Member Data, and uh, here I'm just going to say Fence, Delete Members, and just fence around the entire slab. Now this is in 